Hey, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are on this planet. Welcome to reInvent. I'm Sebastian Stormack. I'm developer advocate live from Paris, France uh, today. And for this session, I'm joined by my uh, estimate colleague, Alex Casalboni, live from Milano. Hello, Alex. And Hello. Laura Thompson in Seattle. And Laura, you are the product manager for a new service called AWS Fault Injection Services. Werner just talked about that service, just announced the service as a preview during his uh, keynote a few minutes ago. So Laura, tell us what is uh, the customer problem we are trying to solve with AWS Fault Injection Service? Yeah, hey guys, I'm really excited to be here today and talk about it after Werner's announcement. So today we announced AWS Fault Injection Simulator, which we also call FIS or FIS, which is a fully managed chaos engineering service that makes it possible for all customers get to get started with chaos engineering and ramp up their existing chaos engineering practice more safely and easily. So we've heard from our customers that more and more customers want to use chaos engineering to improve and validate the resiliency and performance of their applications, but it's challenging to get started and often costly to build and manage custom chaos tooling. So what we're trying to do with Fizz is to offer managed fault injection actions and composable experiment templates that make it a lot easier to get started with best practice chaos testing. Um, another thing that we've heard from customers is that it can be challenging to create basically conditions that reflect what you really see in the real world. So with Fizz, the fault injection actions are really happening. It's not metric manipulation or any fancy things to simulate it, but for those conditions to really happen. So if you take an act, chaos action to throttle API requests, we're actually going to throttle those API requests or memory utilization, that memory is actually going to be getting used to give our customers a really true picture of what's going to happen with their applications under those conditions in the real world. Cool. Thank you, Laura. Um, I like the idea of a simulator. I'm a developer myself, and we have heard during the keynote, actually, chaos engineering, engineering was mentioned a few times, you know, in the context of Netflix, and I think the, the, the Lego speaker also mentioned it. But I want to take a step back and could you tell us in simple words what we actually mean by chaos engineering, like for the, the, the developer of the street, like what does it mean? Uh, where does it come from? Yeah, so Werner talked about this a little bit, like some of the history of um, Netflix really building out the practice with Chaos Monkey. And I think it can mean slightly different things in different ways, but at its core, it's about stressing an application or injecting failures to find the unknown unknowns, basically what you're not already testing for because you don't know you should be testing for, which we find with distributed systems and um, cloud-based applications that are using dozens or more services and components, it gets increasingly complex with traditional testing practices. So how we've been talking about chaos engineering and kind of defining it is around the process of stressing an application, typically in production, but that's not where we recommend folks start. But doing this stressing um, of disruptive events like a server outage or like I mentioned, API throttling, observing how that system responds and based on the response that you see, implementing improvements if you need. So if I understand well, uh, by the name of the service and what you just explained with, with Chaos Engineering, we are, we are injecting fault, we are injecting errors into, into a running system, not necessarily production, as you said. It's probably better to start with your test uh, dev environment. But is it just about resiliency, or is it, uh, or do we have other, or the customers have, have other benefits of, of using um, Chaos Engineering and Fault Injection Simulator? Yeah, so we're intentionally using the word fault and not failure because we see it as a broader a broader thing that you're testing than just things failing. It's also about stress and performance. So we've been thinking about chaos engineering as kind of three main benefits. Resiliency being one very important one, mm -hmm. but also performance and observability. So with resiliency, we're thinking about um, at the the big kind of worst case scenario, an AZ going down or an entire service being unavailable and customers making sure that their applications can respond in a way that they're okay with under those really worst case scenarios. And this is particularly important for mission critical applications and something that many of our financial services customers 
find particularly important. Um, then there's also performance. So this we're thinking about stressing resources. So spikes in CPU use, memory use, um, other resource constraints and how your application responds and performs under those situations. And then also observability. And this is probably the least talked about benefit of chaos engineering, but I think a really important one. And here we're looking at customers being able to check, do I have the right alarms in place? Are they triggering when I thought they were triggering? If they are alarming at the right point, is my team ready to see those alarms and respond to those alarms effectively and quickly and using chaos engineering as a way to test that as well. Yeah, so as Werner mentioned, it's about building that muscle, right? So you don't start in production, you start from simple experiments. So if I were a developer or an architect out there, my next question would be what, you know, in practice, what kind of experiments can I run or can I simulate? Yeah, so I mean, it'll help if we get some more into the, the details of the service. So with FIS, we have a flexible framework that can be used for pretty much any type of chaos engineering experiment. Um, so there's three core components that make up this experiment, actions, targets, and stock conditions. I'll do a demo in a little bit to show you how they actually work, but I'll give you a little overview so you can start thinking about how folks can actually use this. So the actions piece is the fault injection that we've been talking about. This is data being lost in your database, uh, container resources being constrained, uh, server being unavailable, latency being injected, things like that. And with the actions in Fizz, we, the customers build a set of actions. So you can do something super simple, like one action to stop one instance or something more complex, like um, maybe it's five different actions that are gradually degrading network performance in a specific AZ or um, concurrent failure situations that can happen in the real world. So I might have servers being unavailable at the same time as there's an issue with a container service and testing those more complex situations. So we allow customers to basically build their own custom timelines of actions happening in sequence or in parallel to really help you create those very custom situations that happen in the real world. Yeah, and I've, then our... I've, I've seen teams that uh, start thinking about this and uh, usually what happens is that you make an assumption like, okay, what happens if I add latency to the database or something goes wrong? And uh, usually your expectation is different from reality. So I think this kind of experiment will bring you to the actual results, right? What, what, what kind of results can we expect from this kind of simulation? Yeah, totally. Cool. Um, so maybe we we can we can have a demo and see in practice how you can you can uh, inject fault, test resiliency, performance, or obs observability. Um, what 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 is the demo that you're you're going to to show us today? Yeah. So. Oh. Let me give you a little more overview of the components. So we got to the actions that I think will give some more context before we jump into the demo. We also mm -hmm. have targets that the resources that are affected by those actions and we'll show those in the demo as well as stop conditions, which are our safeguard feature that are basically alarms that if they go off while an experiment is being run, we automatically stop the experiment. And that helps you give an automated way of controlling the blast radius and controlling unintended impact to your end users while an experiment's running. So those are the core of what we're going to show in mm -hmm. the demo. So I'll show you how to set up an experiment template, which is what folks can see on the screen now. And this is basically the definition of what's going to happen when the experiment runs. So I'll walk through how to set up those actions like we talked about, um, targeting specific resources and setting up those stock condition alarms that act as the safeguard. So in this case, we have a little plug that before you run a chaos engineering experiment, you, there's some homework that you need to do in terms of being very familiar with your application architecture and having a good idea of what conditions you want to test and how you expect the application to respond, something that we often call a hypothesis when thinking about chaos engineering. So here we're going to assume that we've done our homework and we understand all that and we're going to jump right into creating that experiment template. So we'll walk through how to create the template 
and then run the experiment and see what happens. Okay, so let's dive into that. We suppose we, we did all search, we know what is the hypothesis we want to, to test, and uh, you're going to show us how to create the first uh, experiment template. So I guess we click on that button. Here we're going to create the experiment template. We'll give it a description. So here we're gonna look at multi-AZ instance unavailability. So stop some instances in a couple different AZs. And then select the IAM role. So this is the role that will be assumed by the service whenever we run this experiment. So the role needs permission to basically take all the actions that are defined within the experiment. And now we're going to go to define those actions. So here we're going to create the first action and this we're going to give it a name. So it's going to be our first set of instances that we're going to stop. And select the action type, which is stop instances and define the duration. So the duration is the amount of time that this condition, in this case, stopping an instance is going to be applied and that we'll be monitoring the metrics that will be defined below. Um, start after we use to define that timeline. Here, I'm just gonna leave it blank so that this action starts at the very beginning of my experiment. And then the console automatically creates a target set of instances that this maps to and we'll go define a bit more about those once we work our way down the screen. And then the last section is these action parameters. So these vary by the action type. Um, here with the stop instances, there's just one, and this is a way to roll back the stop at the end of the duration. So here I'm gonna set it to true. And this means after one minute, my duration, those actions are gonna, those instances are going to be restarted. So save that and go on to create our second action, which is pretty much the same thing. It's also the stop instance type set a bit longer of a duration. And here under the start after, I'm gonna select an option this time. So it starts after the first action completes. So these two actions are gonna happen in sequence. And now we're defining the target. So this is our set of instances that are going to be affected by the action that they map to. You can specify specific arms of resources, in this case, instance IDs, or we can um, randomize and use tags and filters to set those instances. So here we're setting 50% of instances that meet the criteria are going to be stopped. I'm going to set my environment to test because we're just going to try this out and make sure it does what we expect. And then also add a filter and this filter lets me target instances only in a specific availability zone. I'm going to set another set of instance targets, and this I'm going to use for the second action. So here it's exactly the same, except I'm targeting a different AZ. And we're going to go back up to the actions and map the second action to that second group of instance targets. So now my first action applies to instances in one AZ and my second action is gonna to apply to instances in a different AZ. And in both cases, it's applying to a random 50% of those instances. Now the last big part of this experiment template is the stop condition. So this I mentioned earlier is our, basically a safety feature. So this is a CloudWatch alarm or it could be a third party alarm that you pull in through a vent bridge that if this alarm triggers, my experiment is going to stop. So now that we have our template, we can go ahead and run it. Start my experiment, I'll give it a name for our demo. We have a little bit of friction just to make sure you really want to start this experiment, which is particularly important for chaos engineering to be extra sure you know what you're doing before you click that start button and destructive actions happen. So here this 
we report on the state of the experiment is running and check our instances page and see that one of our instances is stopping in one of the AZs, our US East 1A, which was part of our first target group of instances. And now that instance is stopped. Um, let me, we're speeding this up a bit. So now we see that the first instance is restarted and the instance in our second AZ is stopping. Our experiment's still running and that first step has been completed and we can see that that second step is running. So now we're gonna show you how the stop condition works. I'm gonna go ahead and manually update that CloudWatch alarm to go into the alarm state. Let's see it in the console. So now that my stop condition metric is alarming, we're gonna see what the experiment does. So you can see that that instance that was stopped and should have stayed stopped for five minutes is now being restarted. And we see that our experiment failed. And if we click on it, we can see that it failed because that stop condition stopped it early. And now all our instances are running again. So just a little bit of information. So now that the experiment is completed, we can see the template ID that we used to run the experiment, as well as the stop conditions that were used, the IM role, and the actions, targets, and tags associated with that experiment template. Um, this gives you a snapshot of the template at the time this experiment was run. You can go modify the template, add additional alarms, add additional actions, change your targeting, whatever you want to do. But this snapshot that's associated with the specific experiment execution, make sure that if you want to go look at the history and see what happened in past experiments, you have a good view of what happened when those experiments were run. And then that status would be completed or successful um, depending on what happened here. We see failed just because we manually triggered mm -hmm. that alarm. Wow. That's pretty cool. Uh, Thank you very much, Laura. Uh, Thank before you, Laura. we jump into a question that was asked on, uh, on Twitch, actually, I wanted to ask you another question about this uh, kind of stop condition. So you can configure an, an alarm. So what, what do you think are the best practices for configuring those kind of uh, stop conditions? And you know, what would you recommend customers in the future? Because it's not generally available yet, but you know, the, what, what would be the idea there? Yeah, so we intentionally built them to be really flexible, taking in any CloudWatch alarm, and then we'll also support EventBridge, which lets customers bring in their own metrics from their own systems or um, partner monitoring tools. The, it really ranges. So what I showed is pretty basic, like a network alarm that might go off at the infrastructure level. But we also hear from customers that they want to do more business side metrics. So web page load times, sign in error rates. Um, I think what we expect to see is customers having those basic alarms, but also once you're operating in production to include alarms that reflect business metrics and potential impact to your end users as well. Got it. Thank you very much. Um, so the service is not generally available yet. It will be available in 2021. And we usually don't discuss much of the roadmap, but we got a question on Twitch about service support. So uh, J and they just, J Rog was asking if, for example, Lambda and DynamoDB and S3 will be supported. Uh, if you can share anything about that, it'd be great. Otherwise, no worries. Yeah, so I guess longer term, we very much see this as an AWS service that we want to meet the needs for customers using many, many of our services. So all the services that that person mentioned, we are aware of and they are on the roadmap, um, not necessarily for our GA launch. So at GA, we do plan to support um, infrastructure level faults with EC2, ECS, EKS, RDS, and then soon to follow our storage services as well, but then to continue to expand and um, the, he brought up Lambda, I think um, that's been a common customer ask, those more managed services where customers have less control to do their own fault injection because those are more managed services, um, but to offer fault injection with those services with Valkyrie. 
thank you for uh, showing a bit of the of the future as well, uh, even if we are talking of the preview right now. Uh, we have a long tradition at AWS to to uh, give best practice, architecture details, and service that helps our customer to actually build highly resilient applications and applications that uh, do not suffer from service interruption. And here, I think it's the first time in history of AWS that we are doing the opposite. We are giving a tool to inject failure into a system. So how can customer uh, use that tool uh, with, with the, the proper safeguards so that they don't introduce real chaos into the, their production infrastructure? Yeah, I I think like many of AWS services, like it is a shared responsibility model and that we are building this to have that mechanism with the stop condition that customers can specify those conditions and we're automatically going to stop that experiment if things get out of control. But it is in the customer's hand to have those metrics and alarms set up to specify them to make sure they're working properly before they run the experiment. So definitely do your homework, try things mm -hmm. out in a non-production environment before moving into production. Yeah, start on your on your dead test environment or staging environment first uh, to see how the system behaves. I think it's very reasonable indeed. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Laura. Uh, I think the the new service page is already up and running. So if you if you guys want to learn more about this service, you can check out aws.amazon.com uh, slash uh, FIS. So just three letters, super easy. Uh, there is also a, a breakout session later today at 12.15 uh, Pacific time. And it will also be available later, uh, I believe starting next week uh, on demand. So go and check out that session later uh, if you wanna learn even more. That's that's a great uh, a great idea. Thank you, Alex. Um, thank you, Laura, for all joining us uh, in AWS on air. What's next uh, for this session today to talk about that uh, new service, which uh, will be launched then in 2021, and that uh, where Werner talked about during the, the the keynote. Thank you, Laura, also for the demo and showing that in, in practice for the very first time. Thank you, Alex, for uh, helping us and, and asking your questions today uh, with me. The next show in about uh, six minutes is the debrief of the of the keynote by Werner. Uh, we will have Nick Walsh, Robert Zhu, and Jeff Barr. Jeff was live blogging the keynote, so he's going to uh, debrief the keynote with you. This is on the same place, Twitch AWS and AWS on air in just about five minutes. Bye-bye. Thank you, Seb. Thank you, Laura.